What's going on you guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the somewhat brand new iPhone 12 Pro and how it behaves when we are filming in low light. Now, previously I made a studio B-roll as well of my brand new studio. And for that, I was using the Sony a7S III to record that B-roll. Now, a lot of you wanted to see the iPhone 12 Pro doing that. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. This video is also gonna be a behind the scenes video so you can see all the different moves that I do. Now I'm going to show you the entire edit and the final result at the end even though I usually do this at the beginning. This is so you can see all the steps I go through to make this b-roll. So the first shot is going to be a reveal shot kind of showing what's inside the studio so we're going to go on and do that from outside here. Now the next shot is just gonna be a pan shot of the desk here and we're gonna do a couple of different pan shots around this area before we start to do those seamless clean in-camera transitions going from one room to another. So for the next shot, we're gonna do a push out from the desk here, and then we're gonna come to this point and we're gonna just do a fast pan down. This allows us for the next shot to start the shot with a pan down as well. And with some color grading, we can match those two clips and it looks, it will look awesome. So that's what we're gonna start with now, just to, to get that pan down fast shot and the push back as well. And then we can transition into something else after that. So for the next one, we're gonna do a simple whip from right to left. And on that left part, we're gonna make an in-camera transition, which we're gonna then go from this studio or this place here into the next room to reveal what's there. Now, another thing you can do if you don't have anything to use to make uh, in-camera transition, you can do like what I just did. Uh, I filmed from the shelf here, and then I didn't have anything which was close to me, which I could use to create that in-camera transition. So what I used was this book. And with this book, I can kind of create the same type of transition, which I now can use to do a similar clip of going back to the main office. So now that we have all the shots that we want for the in-camera transitions to make something look really, really awesome, the only thing left now is to do more takes because it doesn't hurt to have too much footage. And it's really important that you film as much as you can uh, because then you won't regret anything or you won't regret not filming more once you go over to the uh, editing app of uh, your choice. For this one, we're gonna use Luma Fusion, and it's better to have more footage than you actually need, or maybe, you know, some of those additional shots that you took could help improve the B-roll which you are creating, whether it's a B-roll or a cinematic sequence.
Now, one more important thing is to get shots from different angles. So what we're gonna do now is to step it up a notch and we're gonna get some of those shots which are taken from close to the floor and we can sort of have a little bit of uh, angle up towards the uh, the ceiling on the camera and that will create a nice look to our footage as well. We can also do the opposite and go from the ceiling and then film down towards the uh, uh, ground or to the floor. So what we're gonna do now is to do one first which is in this room and this is gonna be uh, from uh, the ceiling pointing down so we can see the uh, Philips Hue uh, LEDs which is under the desk and we can also see uh, basically more of what's inside the room and we think we're gonna see some from this as well. Let's go and try that out and see how it turns out to be. I think we got a couple of shots there which should uh, look decent. Now let's do one from this side of the room and we're gonna do this from the floor and then just angle the camera up a bit so we can get some different shots than just the same height because it's gonna look boring. So I think we have all of the shots needed to make a somewhat decent length to a bureau now. Let's take all the footage and airdrop that over to the iPad and head into LumaFusion to create a cinematic bureau sequence of this brand new studio of mine, which is, it's awesome. So once we trimmed down all the clips, then added some music, and mix the music here as well. As you can see here, this is just to close the track a little bit earlier than the original track and added some cinematic bars as well. We end up with something like this. Now, color grading this inside of LumaFusion was extremely hard for the fact that the iPhone 12 Pro still has a small sensor compared to high-end cameras like the Sony a7 III and the a7S III. Uh, inside of LumaFusion, we also are limited to the way we can color correct and color grade. Hopefully, that is getting improved soon. And um, I tried my best because there was a lot of grain in the footage and I tried my best to remove most of it. And by doing that, I really had to add some fade to the video. And um, in my opinion, we had to add a little bit too much fade and it kind of ruined everything because grain is awful. We don't want to see that in... Uh, in our clips. And the way we can add fade though is by using the levels here, the shadow uh, side here, the left hand side, by pushing that into the middle, you can see that we add some fade to the uh, clip. And we can also use the contrast to do the exact same thing by dragging it over to the left side. We can add more contrast or we can remove the contrast. 
And we can also do this by taking the shadow amount and add more shadows or fade to the highlights. But you want to, you know, you don't want to do that too much because it will ruin your clip anyway. So you want to have as little fade as possible. And I feel like I had to add more than I wanted to get rid of most of the noise here. And even on this one, which was actually more properly lit, uh, we can see a lot of green here and the, the ISO wasn't really that high either. I think it was around uh, two or three hundred on the Filmic Pro app. So some of these shots are looking great and some shots are looking awful if you ask me. When it comes to the transitions and everything, everything was smooth and everything worked out as intended. I mean we shot this in a sequence so it was really easy to put it together inside of Luma Fusion. Now one thing I did was to add some cross dissolves here between the two different transitions. And since this clip is a little bit darker overall than this one, um, if I didn't have the cross dissolve, I would kind of see the line here on the screen. So it would snap from grayish to blackish. So a tip here is to add a cross dissolve to the clips when you are doing a uh, whip transition or pan transition like this going from one room to the other and you have an object or a wall which you are transitioning or using as a transition um, way. Now adding this will definitely make it a lot smoother and better and look better. Yes. Anyway, so uh, this is the edit and it looks like this basically slowing down the clips and uh, editing somewhat to the beat and uh, that's about it. That's the edit of this B-roll. So there you have another B-roll of my brand new studio, but this time shot on the iPhone 12 Pro. Now, like I said, I'm not sure if this is good for low light environments and low light shooting like this, where you have a lot of different lights and you don't have like ceiling lights, flooding all over and, and all of that. But uh, for me, I'm not I'm not sure. I, I don't think I can say now that I don't want to use it. it. Well, it feels like I don't want to use this for the light shooting anymore, but I might change that, you know, my opinion might be different. Maybe it was wrong of me to use uh, Filmic Pro. Maybe Filmic Pro is not optimized for the iPhone 12 Pro's camera yet. And maybe I should go with the native camera. There's only one more thing to do and that's to take it outside and do the same thing, make a cinematic sequence and then uh, see how the results turn out to be when we export it inside of LumaFusion again. So until then, thanks for watching and let me know what you think of the b-roll and the noise and the color grading because that's one of the things that we would really love to see in LumaFusion. An updated, improved a lot better color a uh, color correction system that would be one of the one of the only things that i would like to see with adjustment layers of course so we can put the color on the adjustment layers and you know it doesn't really matter since we have multi-select though but it would be cool to have anyway so until next time, thank you for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comment section below if you did. Make sure to hit that subscribe button up there, down there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.